Okay, so thanks for everyone being here today. Um, topic for today is trading a small account. And I thought um, to cover that subject, um, I would give you just a little bit of a history lesson. I don't have any slides or anything for this today, but a history lesson, my personal history lesson. Um, when I started trading, um, I was in my mid 20s and um, two little kids had a, a business, um, employees that I was trying to um, take care of and not very many, but I had a few employees and and um, had bought a little tiny 976 square foot house uh, that I planned to remodel. So I, I was a busy guy. Um, working all the time and I always had an interest in money and finance and all that kind of stuff and I took a class and got involved in trading now uh, like a lot of people I started really small in in my trading I I didn't um, I'm not independently wealthy my my folks never had money um, so everything that I, I had is I, I made myself and, and, and I put in, and that's not a sob story, um, at all. That is just where I started and everyone has a similar story, um, to that, that, that I have, everybody starts in a different place, um, when they begin this journey and in, into trading and I, I opened up an account for 2500 bucks because that was the minimum amount at that time for me to get in to the market. And, um, um, and just so you know, um, there was, it was very, very difficult to find um, online brokers. It was brand new. It was difficult to find an online broker, and the commissions were really high. Um, you know, we <laughs> we we enjoy an environment today where the commissions are super super cheap. But I remember when I started trading with this twenty five hundred dollars, it was about twenty five dollars a trade. It's what you had to pay in commissions to the online brokerages, because they were few and far between. There wasn't much there. Now, as that gained popularity, that started coming down, but they were really high commissions that you had to pay in trading. Now, I first started out in just trading stocks. And, and so it, I'm, I'm going down this road, guys, because obviously I started with a very small account. Now, I made a commitment that once I opened this account, I was going to continue to save to this account. So I made a commitment that I was at least going to deposit a um, hundred bucks a month into this account and continue saving to that account. And I want to encourage everyone who is trading a small account to continue to save to your brokerage account. It's a good financial practice for anyone to get involved in. Um, and I still to this day at 62, I still save to my brokerage accounts. Money goes into there every year from what I make okay, to continue that process. Even though I, I make a living from trading, um, I continue to save to those accounts, grow them. And that's always been important to me to do to continue that process. So one of the first things that you can do as a small account holder is to commit to yourself. You don't have to do a hundred bucks, do something, start saving. And the other thing that I would really try, and you guys hear me talk about this every once in a while, is don't just think about yourself here. Think about um, your kids and your grandkids. Anyone you talk to 
about this, convince them to be saving more. The savings accounts, brokerage accounts, those kind of things, retirement accounts. Because if they do it early, it, it can change people's lives. Literally change people's lives. So not only should you be doing it, but you should be passing that along generationally through your family to help your kids, your grandkids have a financial future um, that allows them to be involved in the market. Okay? Be allowed to involve, in, well, in investing, um, whatever that is, um, or trading, um, whatever that might be for them. So I started out with that $2,500 account and, and all I knew was stocks and I started trading stocks. And obviously I wasn't ever trading full 100 share positions. I was trading small numbers of shares, okay? And I was looking for those stocks that were very, very cheap. I, you know, anything over 10 bucks was about more than I can afford. So in that small trading account, um, something that I would like to pass on to everyone, I still do this today. When I build a, a, a watch list for stocks, I set a price range. You know, what what can I afford? Somewhere between, you know, here and here, that's what I can afford. And I wasn't gonna waste my time looking at stocks that I couldn't afford. Okay, there was just no point in doing it. And so I was usually looking in that cheaper range of stocks. And I, um, I went from like $10 down to three. I wouldn't usually go cheaper than that um, or rare if I went cheaper than that. So I was looking for stocks in that range. I was looking for stocks with good volume. Okay, I wanted to see volume. Now, early on in my trading, these little tiny guys I actually went down pretty far in volume. Um, I would go as low as 100,000 shares traded a day, and I'd never do that today. Okay, but um, what I preferred is to always have stocks that were above half a million or more. That's really where I wanted to be, knowing that there was a bunch of people in there trading. Uh, so every time I went through um, stocks, I, I wanted to, um, my watch list, the things that I would work, would work with were in this range. And I also wanted to see that the stock was in a, it was trending, okay? Because I'm a trend trader and that's what I do. Um, if it's not in a trend, and I don't care if it's an uptrend or a downtrend, if I'm following the market, I'm gonna be following with the trend of the market, okay? So I'm following the trend overall. And then what I would do is I would just start buying the small positions in stock. And it's one of the reasons why I convince, try, even though I'm an option trader, I try to convince people over and over, don't forget trading a stock is an option for you in trading. We forget that too much of the time and we take the higher risk trade versus the lower risk trade by trading the stock. So there's nothing wrong with buying stock. We've kind of gotten into a mode that, you know, the market is a casino and, and all of the big flashing lights and stuff going on in options is the only way to trade. And that is just not true. Okay, so don't forget stock. And, and you know, a good example of this, guys, is I did this um, after the pandemic sell-off. Okay, we did an exercise as a group in Right Way Options. Had the whole group of people there, and I said, you know, after the pandemic sell-off, I said, let's just build a portfolio. Let's take a little portion of the money that everybody has in their account that they're not using, and we just set aside $10,000, okay? Just $10,000, and we built this portfolio. And, I, and if anyone's in here that could verify this, um, I didn't pick the tickers. We did this as a group. I just filled out the paperwork basically and led led this discussion. OK, 
okay? And I didn't pick the allocations that we had to this portfolio. We just looked for a diversified portfolio. And by the way, we did it. The pandemic sell-off went straight down and we bought on April 1st, 2020. That was the first higher low in the indexes. Go look it up. That was the first higher low in the indexes. And we bought at, with 10,000, just these little tiny positions. None of these are full size positions. And we kind of get into this attitude that we have to trade these massive positions to be successful in trading. And it's just not true. It's just absolutely not true. You don't have to trade giant positions. And the proof of that in just holding this portfolio between April 1st, 2020 to January 2022, this portfolio made $8,000 in profits. Nothing else happened here. No changes, no nothing happened here. We just held positions that were trending and we did nothing else. So to me, this is a, how many of you would agree, this is a pretty good example that you can own stock even in small positions and do really, really well. We returned more than 90% return on this portfolio over that period of time. And I, and I would guess there isn't anybody here that returned a 90% return during that period of time that was trying to swing in and out of the market on their entire portfolio. Okay, so remember small positions are okay. And one of the problems with a small trader, a small account trader is they are forced with an option you have to trade 100 shares. You're leveraging 100 shares of a trade. But as a small account trader with 2,500 bucks, I couldn't do that. And so I was buying small stock positions, okay? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25 shares of stock positions and doing the same thing I always do. Look for stocks that are in a trend, look for the higher lows, pick up a position, run them up and sell them. Okay. Everything had to be worked in a managed trade position, meaning because I couldn't watch trades during the day. I actually used this to plan my trades because I did it the night before. All of my trades were entered the night before the market opened. And I used what was called a stop limit order to do it. I would require the stock to be moving up before I got entered on the trade. And I used this for years, okay? The stock had to be moving up from yesterday's close before it filled my, my trade. The stop loss would automatically drop in and I set a range, buy it between here and here. And it was absolutely mechanical. Okay, where I planned to buy stocks on positions that were very, very small positions. Okay, and I was just working for the percentages in the trades. My goal was to grow my account. Now, I think oftentimes what we have gotten involved in here in the market with options trading is we've, we've become more gamblers than we are traders. It's all about getting everything you can all at this minute. There's just, uh, it's about immediate gratification in the market. But if you do a little thinking about your trading, um, how many of you would agree, we kind of talked a little bit about this yesterday, it came up in RWO, it's a whole lot easier to find a trade 
that will produce a hundred dollars in profit than it is to find one that will produce a thousand dollars in profit you guys agree to that we can all find trades throughout the day right that could produce at least a hundred dollars in return okay now the first thing that comes up when i say this is people get all freaked out and we, i'm not trading for no hundred dollars I'm what's your stop loss on that and and, and, we, and we we complicate the crap out of it here but here's the point guys if a hundred dollars blew across the sidewalk in front of you when you're walking a buy it you're gonna pick up that hundred bucks right is anybody here gonna have a hundred dollar bill blow across the sidewalk in front of you and not pick it up no so why is it we will walk by hundred dollar bills over and over and over in the market and we won't take them got to have more money got to make more in fact i would submit to you if you went back and could actually find out this information when you had trades that were in a profit if you would have just taken them your account would be in a much better condition than it is right now. So if I had to start over today with a $2,500 account, I would be doing exactly the same thing. Okay. If I had to start at the same place, I'm going to trade small positions. I'm probably not going to get involved in options because options carry massive risk and we keep forgetting that we think options are less risky than stock and it's not true okay now I know there's probably not a lot of people trading accounts this small but if you're trading ten fifteen thousand dollars okay now we can start talking about options to trade in the market you saw me when i first came in we were looking at pfizer here pfizer's popping up out of that downtrend you look at the gen 2025 contracts in here for 365 dollars you can buy a position in an option in pfizer there's thirty one thousand other people that believe that is a good buy. And out of a $10,000 account, a $365 trade is not too big. Okay, but as a small position trader, a small account trader, you have to look for those stocks that trade in those lower price frames. Here in the market you want to be looking at the Pfizer's you want to be looking at you know the Cokes things like that that give you that opportunity that's going out to Gen 2025 if you go to the June contracts you're in the two dollar range you've got to be looking for those smaller positions now remember anytime you trade leverage you take more risk on the trade um, how many of you would agree? Show of hands, type a Y. It's pretty much impossible right now with the volatility of the market to find any option trade, 100 share position option trade that doesn't have at least 25% risk to a stop loss. Would everybody agree with that? It's, it's tough to find something. So remember, you can buy a partial of stock and have far less risk percentage-wise by buying a few shares of stock. Okay. Now, when I did start trading options, I had grown my account. And by the way, um, my story getting to a bigger account um, did not go well. Um, my first experience was probably the worst thing that could have happened to me. I got in the market 
with tons and tons of confidence and my account went like that I just I just drove it was like amazing and I thought I got this this is easy I don't know what people are talking about here it's the easiest thing in the world buy something that just makes me money okay well, what I had done is I had mistaked a bull market for me being a genius. And when that bull market ended, my account went back down here. I lost it all back to the market. Okay. If you guys could equate that to what's going on right now, in the market when the market was bullish everyone was making money right it was easy you could break every rule in the book it was easy not so easy right now is it and everyone's still trying to trade long even though the trends are still down all four indexes are in a downtrend and yet everyone is only trying to trade long Okay, so you want to think about these details um, in your trading and be thinking about how you can manage your money a little bit better. And when you have a small account, something that came up a lot for me when I started helping people with trading is, yeah, but Doug, uh, you know, I'm only trading $15,000. This whole trading plan, this whole idea that I have to have some numbers and know what my risk is and all that that doesn't apply to me. That only applies to those that are rich, that have a bunch of money. No. It applies more to the small trader than it does to the rich. See, my position today, I can take a lot more risk than I used to be able to take. A big bad trade for me hurts, but it doesn't put me out of business. When you're trading a small account, you have to be very stringent to the risk that you take in trades. And sometimes, guys, the option is the worst choice. Particularly when volatility is high, the option can be the worst choice because we pay high extrinsic value right now for our options. That's the decaying portion of the option. All right, and we have to think about that pretty carefully as we, you know, move along okay, in the market. If, if we're paying an awful lot for that premium for the right to trade it, we better have some pretty good assurance that the trade is right. And the risk that we're taking is suitable for that size of account. I'm not saying option trading can't be done at these lower price amounts. I'm not saying that at all. It certainly can. Okay. Um, exit the room and come back. Um, that's probably what's going on for you there. You, your, your browser's clogged up. Go out and come back. So when we take a look um, at um, a strategy that I created for me so that I could trade full time or not full time that I could trade without watching the market during the day, I traded credit spreads, lots of credit spreads. After I built my account up, I think I was ten, twelve thousand dollars or something when I started trading options. But I wasn't trading directional options. I was trading credit spreads. And I, I explained this, you know, yesterday. If if we have a ten thousand dollar account, and you're you're trying to make some money with that ten thousand dollar account, and I traded a lot of dollar wide credit spreads. Okay, dollar wide credit spreads, and I, I had the rule. Okay, if I was trading a dollar wide credit spread, that I had to be able to collect at least 33 cents of that dollar in credit, which means that at expiration, my maximum profit on that trade was $33. Okay, 
Now, the reason this was attractive to me is first, I couldn't watch the market during the day. And secondly, I could put on trades that had probabilities of winning of 70% or better. So my probability, whenever you buy a directional trade, your probability is 50-50. By buying credit spreads or doing credit spreads, I was able to put on trades. Um, next thing I would do is clear the cache of your browser um, get or try a different browser. I'm guessing your browser is all clogged up. Dump the cache, try again. So, who would ever put together a strategy, okay, that you're trying to make $33 a trade? Well, I did it because of the high percentage in here of what I could do, and I actually put together this, this plan that if I could trade both bull put credit spreads and bear call credit spreads and trade small trades all over the market, only in trending charts, and I could win seven out of 10 of those pretty regularly, then I had a strategy that I could grow my account. Now, I want you to think about this. If, if um, you can do $33, Okay, 10 to 15 times a month. And you do that month over month. How much did you make in that $10,000 account? That's 330 a month. That's $3,960 on the year. Okay. So if you made just 10, just did 10 to 15 a month and made an average of 330 a month, that's a 39% return in that little account. Now, I'm not gonna be making money, I'm not gonna be making a living from a little account. And unfortunately, so many people today, they try to make a living out of those little tiny accounts. But trust me, if you try to make a living out of a little tiny account, you're more likely to, to lose all your money than you are to grow that account. Now, long story short, when I started doing this month over month over month, I grew my account after years of work. It wasn't fast, but after years of work, I grew my account to a place where I could go full time in the market because I had developed enough consistency in my trading that I could count on those same kind of returns if I just kept doing the same thing over and over and over. Because see, if I'm trading one contract trades for a $33 profit, when this account grows, I can double my return, right? I just have to trade two contract trades and then three contract trades and then four contract trades. And I can continue to do the same thing and continue to grow my account. Okay. And that's what I did. Whenever I would reach a threshold that I could start trading a bigger, a bigger um, account size, that's what I would do. Or trade size, that's what I would do. And I just kept growing that. Okay. Now, one of the things that's really, really important to think about is the consistency of your trading. And because I was trading trades that had at least a 70% probability of winning, that meant that my win-loss ratio was automatically higher.
higher as long as I manage those trades right. If I put the trades on correctly and manage them correctly, my win-loss ratio would be higher. And that's one of the things we don't talk about enough and people don't think about enough. See, if you can show me a way that 90% of the time, every time I do this trade, I make $10, I can make all the money I'd ever want at a 90% probability of just making $10. I would do that all day long. Would do nothing else. If I could do that. Well, clearly I can't do that. So one of the things I try to do is I really try to work hard on my probability, my win-loss ratio. See, too many times as traders, and particularly with small accounts, we get the idea that activity equals results. How many of you have you've ever done that? When the market's like this, what, what happens? And the market's going down and we're losing money in our account. What do we typically do? We don't slow down our trading. We actually speed up our trading. We go faster because I got to get the money back. Right? I'm desperate. I got to get the money back. And we actually go faster in a market that has less odds of us winning. And that's how I would yo-yo my account. For years, I yo-yoed my account like this. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't hold any consistency. When I finally realized that I was creating my own problems in these time periods, I was continuing to trade with the same kind of intensity in these markets as I was in these markets. And by the way, I didn't do much shorting back then either. I really couldn't afford it because to short stock, you have to short 100 shares. You can't short partial shares. Okay, they, you won't, they won't let you do it. So shorting was out of reach for me for a long, long time and still I, until I started trading options. And when I started trading options, the short trades for me were the bear call credit spreads. Okay, where I didn't have to take massive risk to put on those trades. But I really started to focus in on the win-loss ratio. Okay. which meant that I really needed to spend some time studying what was working well for me and what was not working well for me. And oftentimes we as traders don't do that. Just give me a trade. I got to do something. I want to trade. But I took the responsibility to work on consistency. Okay. And by studying my past trades, I learned about the things that worked better than the things that didn't. I learned about me where I was making mistakes, where I was letting my emotion get in the way, where I wasn't recognizing the market condition, you know, like a downtrending market and still only trying to trade long. Bad idea. looking for those uh, trade patterns and being very stringent to the trades that I set up. And so I stayed very focused to the win-loss ratio. And over time, I learned the things that worked better for me, the things that didn't. Things that didn't, I just quit doing. But during these periods of time with that small account, I just struggled and struggled and struggled because I wasn't recognizing the change in the market. I was finding market direction. I was doing all kinds of things. Okay, to, um, and, and just making my life miserable overall. Periods of time where I felt like a king and then periods of time where I was a loser. And, um, you know, I just couldn't believe I was losing all this money back to the market. All that work was gone. 
And you can fix that problem by working in your win-loss ratio. And this is really important for those small account traders. See, we get the idea that activity equals results. But if you're running, and, and this is something that I do all the time when I work with people in coaching, I ask questions about how many trades are you winning, how many trades are you losing? And you know, it's remarkable how often it comes up that they win half of their 50% of their trades and they lose 50% of their trades. And consequently, guess what's happening to their account? not going anywhere in fact what tends to happen is on the losing trades people take profits so quick because they finally have some money and they let these losses get too big and overall their accounts declining You see, activity doesn't equal results. And when you're feeling the pressure in the market that you've got to trade something, you're usually making a mistake. If you ever feel like you're rushed to a trade, you're probably making a mistake. Okay, We have to be a, a lot more focused into the trade setup and the risk of the trade. And particularly as a small account holder, You've got to be very stringent to your rules of risk and reward and win-loss ratio to grow that account. So you may think it's crazy, and, and you know, um, my wife says that I'm special, and, and she means that in a very derogatory way, <laughs> that I'm special, but... If there is anything good about me and my trading, it's because I focus on those things. I look for trades that give me higher than normal probability wherever I can. And I, I am really focused on my win-loss ratio. Because if, if I can avoid that losing trade that I continue to tank because it's a knee-jerk reaction. I just, I, the market gaps up in the morning and doggone it, I'm just rushing in and buying every morning and dang it, the whip saw me out, I get chopped out of the trade. I'm doing it over and over and over. Well, I have to recognize that and stop doing that. If I'm trading against the market direction over and over and over and I'm just beating my head against the wall, trying to make long trades work in a downtrending market, I have to recognize that and stop doing it. Because every time I make a loss, I have to make up that money to reach my goal. Okay? Which is the next thing, the next step here I want to talk about over the next few minutes here is those goals. Now, I, I hear this from a lot of people. Don't bother me with that jazz and goals and all that BS because I'm telling you guys, the only way I have been able to return 20% a year, every year or better, over the last 20 years is because that's what I shoot for. That's my goal. It's no accident that I do it over and over and over. It's because that is what I shoot for. In my option account, 20% or better every year. That's what I'm after. So it's no accident. And, and by the way, I did have one year in those last 20 years that was just below 20%. Okay, But I've had several years well over 20% because that's what I focus on. Okay? So I trade for goals. And I use an example in the in the 3A trap class. If you have a goal of making $1000 a month and have a risk tolerance of only $100 to a stop loss and I'll admit that's going to be hard to find. 
Okay. But here's where the importance of having a plan is. If you're a 50-50 trader, and let's say you trade 12 trades on average over the course of a month, okay, and you're a 50-50 trader, that means you're going to have six wins and you're going to have six loses. Whoops, didn't loss six loses okay if you follow your rules that means you've lost six hundred dollars on your losing trades so it means on your winning trades those six winning trades how much do you have to win you got to cover the 600 and to make a thousand you need to make sixteen hundred dollars on the winning trades okay now you think that's not possible that's not going to work that can't work and i'll admit it's hard when you're a 50 50 trader but take 1600 dollars and divide that by six it means you have to make 266 66 per trade to make a thousand dollars a month now, anyone trading options, you guys think this is $266 profit? Is that out of reach? Is that unreasonable? It's doable, right? Maybe a little bit hard, but it's doable. And why does this work? I can lose half my trades and still make a $1,000 a month goal if I follow my stop loss rules and I only take trades that give me the potential of making that much. Meaning I'm not taking my profits off too fast. I can make $1,000 a month. So being focused on my win loss ratio and focused on my goal has made me successful in trading. And there's no magic in that. There's nothing about me that's special. I do the same things over and over with a business plan to succeed. This is where I'm starting the year. This is where I want to be at the end of the year. And every single week and every single month, I'm working toward that goal. That's why it works. It's not magic. That's why it works. Okay. Yeah, Jim, you could take from dollar spreads, you can take two and a half or fives or even ten dollar spreads. The problem is when you're trading that really small account, you might not be able to afford those. But um as that account grows yes absolutely you you know that i would prefer nowadays trade five dollar spreads and i trade five dollar spreads with large contract positions okay because my win loss ratio is so high i'm comfortable doing it and i just keep doing it a lot over and over okay So when you think about this, can you build a plan with your small account focused on your win-loss ratio? And by the way, this gets a whole lot easier. It's a whole lot easier because if you can find that one mistake that's having repetitive losses and eliminate it, now you're losing five trades or $500 and you're winning seven trades in that one month period of time and what you actually need to produce in a return per trade is less it gets easier okay that's why i focus on this you see there's a mistake that most people make in trading and it's it happens with people with big accounts people with small accounts is that they believe activity equals results. 
and it doesn't. I use a phrase all the time, trade less, make more. Because I'm so picky about the trades that I take, I trade a lot less than a lot of people. But I'll put my account against most of them and come out on top because I'm so stringent to what I do. Okay. Now, I think this is important to talk about because hopefully what you're seeing here is I've taken, I've tried to take the gambling out of trading. All right. I only take well-planned trades that give me high probability of winning. That's what I'm after. All right. And when I take those trades, I take them with a plan to get me to a goal. And I know it's unpopular to talk about that in today's world because we're so shoot from the hip. Um, it, it's, it's ready, shoot, aim. And rarely do people hit what they're what they're shooting at unless they aim. Aim before you pull the trigger. And this is so important for small account traders to do those things. Now, what trades do you take? You have to you have to work out those numbers. Um, in your trades, you have to work out, you know, the stocks that are they're trending concisely and, and moving up right now. We just have such a volatile market. Um, folks are struggling in the market because they won't stop trading. Uh, show of hands, how many here right now listening to me right this second would have been better off if you just didn't trade last month? Your account would be better off if you just stopped. You'd have more money, right? Activity does not equal results. Yeah, some people, yeah, if you're following some good rules and guidelines, you're doing better. Then that's great. Okay. But if you're not, you've got to figure out what's going on. You got to figure out what's happening and then you got to stop trading and get back on a stable path of winning. Because often, well, we all know the emotion that comes up in trading when we're losing, right? We get desperate. We want to trade faster. We got to trade more. We don't focus in on the mistakes that created those losses. We just hurry to trade another trade. Okay. What's my reference? I, I mean, look at the price action, William. Um, <laughs> you can you can see the volatility in the price action itself of the charts. Just take a look at the diamonds. Yeah. Okay. Look at these big candles in here and these swings. That's volatility. I don't care how good your technical analysis is. Your chances of winning. When volatility is this high, I don't I don't care how good your technical analysis is. Your odds of winning is less. Okay, there's nothing healthy about a market that swings 500 points to the upside and ends up closing almost down. There's nothing healthy about that. And all you have to do is, is go look at the implied volatility of the options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I I hope I hope this was useful to everyone that you got my meaning in this. And and just the recognition. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys this. This is this is just a representation, I guess, of what I'm talking about 
people. Everyone's trying to trade long. Everybody only wants to buy long stocks. Well, first look at the trend of the Dow. Is that a long stock index? Look at the SPY. Is that a long stock index? Look at the Qs. Is that a long stock index? I use something that's called a guppy chart. The, these purple lines, purple, blue, however you see them, those are the short term moving averages. These salmon pink colored lines are the long term moving averages. Does that look like a bull market? Does that look like a bull market? Does that look like a bull market? And believe me, I spent years trying to argue with the market. I, I'm no different than anyone else that's ever struggled in the market. No different. I made a mess of things. Truly made a mess of things. Okay. Are you trading with the directional market? Thomas just noted right there, uh, five buys, 30 sells. He's he's an RWO and he reported today, he took a trade on a, a bear call spread on a, a um, oil sector stock. I can't remember what it is, Thomas, and reported a 65% gain return. Because he's trading with the direction of the market, not fighting the direction of the market. That makes sense, guys. And I know it's not popular to talk about this. Everyone wants to just be busy and trade. Um, Stefan, yeah, volatility can be um, really affecting your trades. And I've only got just a couple of minutes here, but you know, let me give you an example. Here's Apple coming into its earnings port. There, there's hardly ever a time when Apple's earnings are not just absolutely highly anticipated. And you can see it in the implied volatility. The short-term contracts have 90% of implied volatility. 90%, which means that over the course of a single day, this can potentially move $6.90 based on that implied volatility. If you go out here to the June contracts, 50 days to um, open, that implied volatility is not affecting as much in that trade, but it still has, and this is important, plus or minus $14.5 a potential move. Now, implied volatility is calculated based on the way people are trading. That means that there are people in Apple right now that believes this can go up by about $15, and people that are trading that believe this can go down by about $15. At the same time, that's the implied volatility of the trade. So when implied volatility is high, you pay more for extrinsic value. That is the time value of the trade. If I change this here to extrinsic value, and I buy this um, option that's just inside the money, of the $8.45 that I pay for this, $6.30 premium it is decaying against me every day. It will be at zero at expiration. So 50 days from now, all of that money evaporates. Anytime implied volatility is high, you pay more for premium that's working against you in options. Okay, so it's something to make note of and be paying attention when the market is high, volatility is high, and we're bouncing back and forth a lot, every option you buy, you're paying a higher premium on the extrinsic value of the trade. So anybody taking a trade here recently that just looked like a great trade, really good setup, 
and it just didn't perform, but the losses were way bigger than you had expected, it really didn't go down, but the losses were bigger. That's a result of implied volatility. Okay, and if it does go against you, that implied volatility works even harder against you if the if the trade goes against you. Okay, well, and that's Stefan. That's why I'm saying that selling premium and high implied volatility uh, markets is the way to go. Why we're up on a QQQ chart sell. It's why Thomas made good money selling premium in a high implied volatility market working with the direction of the trend. Okay. So I hope that made some sense to you guys and I hope that helped because I, I went through this process. I didn't start where I am. I started with nothing really market wise and very little time to actually trade. And I was able with the planning and the focus to goals, the focus to the win-loss ratio, being very stringent to those rules that I created based on the evaluations of my past trade, what works, what doesn't, has allowed me to build my account. And, and I would just do one additional exercise here, guys, for everyone to think about. If, if we assume that there's, you know, barring holidays and vacations and things like that, we've got about 50 weeks of, of the month or of the year that we can trade, okay? And if we could just make $25, okay? On average, out of those 50 weeks, get here. Calculation, right? If we could just make, on average, $25 a day, I'm thinking the small trader here, on average, $25 a day, that means you find that trade that makes you 100, 150 bucks, and you do that a couple, three times a week. A couple times a week. Okay? And you're going to average $25 a day. At the end of the year, that's $6,250 profits. Okay? And I know there's people in here, and I'm not going to ask you to show your hands, but that would been, that have been the best year you've ever had. Okay, so remember, if you're that small trader, think about what you're trying to achieve. What's that goal that we're after? And work toward that, because that's what grows an account. And again, there's nothing special about me. There's, there's, there's a reason I've had the kind of success that I had because of what I focus on trading. So hope you guys find that useful. I got to back out of here. John's going to be on in about 10 minutes, he said. Um, so you have a little break. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here and listening. Hope you got something out of this. want to wish you all the best. And RWO, folks, I will see you back over there um, at the end of the day. Take care, everyone.